Um. Hey again, YouTube. It's me, Ariel, and this week I am taking you on a little mushroom walk. I live in the Pacific Northwest, which I consider like one of the worldwide capitals for cool mushrooms that we can find in the woods. And the intention of this video is to just give you like a little snapshot of the mushroom species that you can find in the average forest up here. I will also be covering a couple little like plants that I find there too, because I am an herbalist. And I want to enhance my fungal identification skills. And so I will be embarking on that kind of journey soon. I am not good at identifying mushrooms. Um, mostly I am using like the Berkey herbarium key online to figure it out. I have not done any spore prints this week, but if you're a newbie like me, perhaps you'll enjoy this video. If you are an advanced fungal mushroom person, perhaps you can help me out by narrowing down some of the identifications that I've made. I don't know. All in all, I hope you find this video fun and informative and a little annoying disclaimer here. Please do not take any of this as you should eat this mushroom or use it as medicine because mushroom identification is super finicky and I'm not responsible for that. And so we are learning together. I will tell you about the species that I know by heart and I will show you the species that I have no idea what they are and everything in between. So without further ado, let's go wander in the woods. Here we are back in this beautiful half deciduous half evergreen forest with my very seasoned trail guide Willow. It looks like she's already spotted something. Awesome. Hopefully you can see this hard polypore mushroom on a decaying log and this is the red belted polypore. In a previous video I've talked about the red belted polypore but I thought it was a bracket fungus which is like almost the exact same species, but one is a little more brown and this one is a little more red, hence its name, the red belted polypore. It is used really similarly to reishi mushrooms in medicine and is a great immune system boost. Now we're back frolicking in the forest, a little, uh, little Jesus rock in the tree, that's cool. And right off the bat, I see another red belted polypore and well, this one is just looking so good, I'm just gonna yank it off and put it in my pocket so I can make medicine from it at home. So these next ones, these little white mushrooms, they're about a centimeter or two wide in the cap and only an inch or two tall. These are the most common mushrooms I see in the forest around here. And I think that they're something called Mycena levigata because the gills are attached to the stem but I haven't done a spore print, so I cannot say for certain, but I think that's what they are. There's so many. Uh-oh. If they're in a ring, we might get swept away to Fairyland. Fairyland is no joke, guys. One day there is said to be 100 years here. But anyway, these mushrooms are in the Mycena genus, and they're pretty, but tiny and not edible. Here's a weird one. At first, I thought it was like a dead coral mushroom, but that didn't seem right. Then I thought maybe it's some kind of lichen, but no, it is the mysterious Xylaria hypoxylon, an inedible mushroom that is just here to kind of look weird, I guess. So good luck to you, Xylaria hypoxylon. So as we continued our frolic through the underbrush, we came upon a really cool looking bunch of like gothic black autumn beauties. Based on everything I've read and seen, these look like Leptonia genus mushrooms. And that is a genus that has a lot of toxic species, so we will not be taking these home and frying them up. And as you can see, we're always like playing with and poking the mushrooms and we do wash our hands afterward. In the future, we will take these home and do a little spore print on them. And if they have a peachy colored spore print, then my assertion will be correct. But today, I am only interested in harvesting the edible and medicinal mushrooms that I 100% know, not looking to branch out, looking to find new cool species though, like these. What are these? They look like little orange sunshines. Well, some reverse image searching told me that it could be in the alder calf genus, and these are indeed growing on fallen, rotting alders, which is what a lot of our forests are made of. So that's what I think they are, but since I'm not eating them, it doesn't really matter. I have a use for you. Now we see those tiny little fairy-like mushrooms. I think these are in the Mycena genus, like the ones we saw earlier. 
But lo and behold, right next to them are some perfect little new baby oyster mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms are Pleurotes phosphoriatus, and they have this characteristic anise-like smell. Anise is kind of like a licorice-y smell, and the reason I am collecting these is because I 100% know what they are. I've eaten them a million times, fry them in butter. Normally I'd have a knife on me to do this properly, but I didn't prepare, as usual. Mama, do I guess? Oh Shut wow, up, Mama. that's amazing. Yeah. I'm pretty sure these are the exact same mushrooms as the ones we saw a couple minutes ago, the orange ones, but they are a little bit paler, and that might just be, you know, different light conditions. In general, when you're trying to identify mushrooms, you're going to want to pay attention to the size, what kind of plants or grass or wood they're growing on, the color of the stem, how the gills are attached or not attached, what the gills look like, and so many other considerations. I saw this little orange thing on the ground and I double taked, and then I realized as I picked it up that it was just a little madrona tree fruit, which is just a beautiful native tree we have out here, and you can use the fruits to make like a lemonade for treating UTIs and tightening your skin and such. These are called inky cat mushrooms, and I had only seen them before in like fields and stream beds. And mushroom mycelium is very particular upon which substrate it grows on. So I didn't know that these inky caps could grow on the tree, but nature is full of surprises. They're almost kind of creepy looking, aren't they? I am 90% sure that these are Coprinellus micaceus or inky cat mushrooms. These inky cat mushrooms, if I try to pick them, they will disintegrate into a inky paste of nothingness within an hour or two if I get them, just because they have an enzyme that eats themselves. So if you ever want to harvest these because they are edible if you cook them, you must just work very quickly and immediately put them in your frying pan. I did not have the means to harvest them today, so I'm just going to let them be. And if I were to harvest them, I would take a spore print and make sure that they had reddish brown or dark brown spores because I don't want to put anything in my mouth if I don't exactly know what it is. This next species is kind of a golden yellow and they are growing out of another decaying log and the top is kind of like slimy and slick and they do have like a spongy texture and gills underneath. I'm pretty sure this mushroom is in the Cortinarius genus, which means that it's probably not edible and maybe even toxic. This here is just a pine cone. There's lots of them. Then we came to a sunnier part of the forest and we saw a couple really beautiful deciduous trees. And this first one is the Cascara Sagrada. The Cascara tree is not related to the coffee drink that you get at Starbucks, no no. It is a traditional folk remedy for constipation. And the leaves, as you can see, are oppositely arranged. The leaves have an oval rounded shape and are this beautiful lime green color. The bark itself is kind of a darkish brown, kind of grayish brown. And like with any tree, when you're harvesting bark, please harvest from the upper branches and twigs so as not to kill it. I thought that these next mushrooms were surely oyster mushrooms, but they're too small and they look kind of like angel wing mushrooms, Pleurotes cybella. And they grow on conifers, not hardwood, like oysters, so they might be toxic, so we're going to stay away from them. Speaking of slightly toxic, this is a red elderberry tree, our beautiful, graceful native elderberry. You can see it's slightly serrated, like toothed edges, very delicate leaves that are about as long as my hand, I am not large, and light green color that is only fading more because it's autumn. Now, these don't have any berries right now because the birds probably ate all of them, but it has this cluster of bright red elderberries. They are not very fun to eat because they may give you some gastrointestinal distress because they have a cyanide-like compound in them. In small amounts, we still use elderberry flowers for immune boosting. So these are some proper oyster mushrooms growing out of a very dead and decayed alder log. Alder is a hardwood, and that is what oyster mushrooms like. They have the distinctive kind of anise like smell to them. They have the right texture and gill pattern, and I'm going to eat them. I'm very excited. I didn't know what to put them in because I didn't really plan on harvesting mushrooms today. So as you'll see in a bit, I ended up using Willow's little bat cloak to harvest them in. Improvise, adapt, overcome, I guess, right? 
Here, put it here. What if we wrapped him up in your Batman cape? Put your cape down. No. Can I please use it? Um. Thank you, Willa. I need it, yes. Perfect. As we were packing the bat cloak with mushrooms like a 1930s style runaway, I noticed some really weird fungus. I thought it was like little pine needles at first, but this is actually a type of jelly fungus. Its name is Calicero cornea, and while other jelly funguses are edible, many of them are, we don't know if this one's edible, so best not to stick it in your mouth randomly. I covered this mushroom in my first mushroom herb walk. This is the false turkey tail mushroom. It has the kind of colorful rings like a turkey tail does, but it's much duller and kind of flakier consistency than a true turkey tail. Now these, what on earth are these? Let us look them up. The next one threw me off right here on this old alder because the babies are like cup-like and weird, but I think it's false turkey tail based on its kind of like hairiness and lack of pores on the underside and it looks like turkey tail. Guys, I have no idea what this is. At first glance, it just looks like a red belted polypore, but it's got this like velvety grayish surface. And I, I just don't know what it is. Like all of these, if you have a correction or an idea, please let me know in the comments. So here's this little gray polypore. A polypore is a hard medicinal mushroom that grows on dead wood. This guy looks like a little like an artist conch, but he's really light gray. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what it is. That's the little baby form. Uh, if anybody knows what this polypore is, please let me know. As luck has it, there is a black elderberry right outside of the trail as we were leaving. This black elderberry is the edible, traditionally medicinal kind that we use. It doesn't have as much of those cyanide compounds, and there's no berries right now, but these are the berries you want. As you can tell, it looks very similar to the other elderberry, but it is darker and pointier leaved. They still have the same toothed edges. Well, that is it for our walk today. I hope you all learned something. I learned lots of things by looking up these mushrooms and trying to figure out what they were. It was really fun. And again, don't take any of this as official fungal knowledge because it is not, but it's great to be back out there for my soul and for my family. And so I will be doing more herb walks in the coming weeks. Love you lots. Bye.